Leadership can be defined as a function of knowing yourself, having a vision that is well communicated, building trust among colleagues, and taking effective action to realize your own leadership potential. Being in a position of leadership means putting the needs of others first while having some influence in expected outcomes. Are the youth ready to take up this role? If so, how can they be steered in the right direction? Today we are talking about the Wazimba Youth Foundation. The youth are constantly being reminded that they are the leaders of tomorrow. Youth leadership has been elaborated upon as a theory of youth development in which young people gain skills and knowledge necessary to lead civic engagement, education reform and community organizing activities. In Kenya, the Ministry of State for Youth Affairs was established on December 7, 2005 to represent and address youth concerns in Kenya. This was found necessary against the backdrop that despite the numerical strength of young people, they are not well represented in the national, political, socio-economic and development process. This ministry has different departments that each aim to empower the youth with appropriate and adequate skills, knowledge and attitudes to realize the full potential for individual and national development. In addition to this, there is also the National Youth Service, which was established as a unit to provide alternative things for the youth to do in order to keep them out of trouble. The NYS came up as a unit to mold the youth into disciplined and organized manpower who might in turn take over the leadership of the country. My guests in studio, Anthony Ndungu, Executive Director, the Kenya Wazimba Youth Foundation, and John Sibiokumu, who is a patron of the foundation as well. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I wouldn't say why we're laughing, but let me start with you, Tony. Yes. The Wazimba Foundation, the Ke Wazimba Youth Foundation. Yeah. Um, what is it and what's the basis of it? Um, the Kenya Wazimba Youth Foundation. First of all, I think the word that counts here is Wazimba. Right. And Wazimba stands for extraordinary. It's an Afrikaner word for extraordinary. And so the Kenya Wazimba Youth Foundation is, is, an, is an organization that builds up on the extraordinary nature of young people and the fact that there is a diversity of youth in Kenya. There is an element of um, the versatility. There's, there's the whole concept of having young people innovate and create. And Wazimba focuses on helping young people uh, zone in onto that thing that they value and helps them bring, them, bring it out and bring it out as best as mm -hmm. they possibly can. And when you say help, what do you mean? Because if I have the, um, in, in uh, the creativity in me mm -hmm. and I don't do anything about it, how then will you help me do I that? I think that's the biggest issue. The issue is not that people don't have creativity yeah. and they don't know what to do to find a way to express themselves or be able to um, invest in their creativity. The problem is they don't do anything about it. And Mozimba is all about getting young people motivated and, and involved in doing something about it. But you also need to create a platform on which young people can do these things. So for example, if a young person wants to sing, or if a young person wants to uh, do something for the community, paint, art, whatever it is a young person wants to do, uh, you need first to make sure that the young person can be able to have someone to look up to, somebody who's going to give them that time to help them perfect their art, but at the same time you'd like to be able to um, provide an opportunity, a platform for the young person to be able to execute what it is they believe they can do. Okay. And that's what Wazimba finds. It finds a person to mentor young people, but at the same time it creates the platform through which the young people can put out whatever it is they have. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been in existence for? Because when you say platform, it means it's already there, it's in existence. Well, it, it, the, I think platform, we've been in existence since September 2006. Uh, but the platform is really not something solid. It is more actually an attitude than anything else. Because there's so much, there's a lot of need, there's a lot of uh, work that needs to be done, there's a lot of things, a lot of opportunities that need to be created. But you first need the individual to go seeking the opportunity and creating that opportunity. And, and then is when we can talk about results and you can talk about um, being able to effect change in some way or the other. And, and I think that's what Wazimba focuses on. Wazimba doesn't focus necessarily on governance type leadership or political type leadership or economic type leadership. Wazimba focuses on personal leadership because it's all about personal initiative. So if you can be able to get young people, irrespective of where they're from and who they know and what they have learned and what whatever tribes or groups they come from, it's about getting young people to innovate, to create and to be involved in executing what they come up with. Okay, John C.B., he's very passionate about just even explaining the foundation itself. Is this what encouraged you to be a part of it or did you feed him those words? <laughs> 
I'm equally passionate, <laughs> as will become clear in the course of our interview. Okay. Um, Miss Iko, I think um, I was, um, wherever I was, minding my own business, as is my wont, and um, the phone rang, and some very young people, Tony, Jerome, Sylvia, Nduta, Decker, uh, came to me as a collective unit and said they have a very particular project which they're calling LEAD. And Tony perhaps will take uh, the baton and describe what LEAD is. Yeah. But uh, their idea, their project, what they wanted to do was to make relationships with other young people on the African continent. They chose 12 countries and they wanted, they explained that they were going to put two cars together and drive through the 12 African countries and end up in South Africa, come back through all the countries in between, meet Desmond Tutu, and make linkages with people of the same age. And what they needed, uh, it was an appeal, uh, you know, like when you have a stakeholder sort of thing, it was an appeal, to, first of all, to my ego, uh, in the sense that they said, uh, Mze, um, we need a patron who might sort of uh, front our whole expedition and give it legitimacy. I have spent 30 odd years of my life as a teacher in the classroom with youngsters between the ages of 12 and 18 and therefore that is my constituency and the fact that these young people had the wherewithal of their own to come up with an initiative like this particularly in a country such as ours where nobody needs reminding that in December and January we're making a very good job of sort of annihilating each other. Yep. I thought um, if the young people who indeed make up 70% of our population were trying to go beyond the animosities that had been created by history and make common cause, I was delighted to take on the role of patron. And I'm sure you're going to ask the trick question, what did the role of patron involve? Is it a trick question, really? <laughs> um, no, no, it's, okay. a, it's a, maybe an obvious question. Yeah. The role of patron for me has involved making whatever contacts I have in this society and going to them directly uh, and saying to them X, Y, Z, this is the project that the Wazimba Foundation are undertaking. I believe it's a wonderful project. Obviously, it's going to cost some money. Would you be so kind as to help? And um, lots of people have picked up the phone and um, yes, yeah, so in a nutshell, 49% um, ego, 51% action. Okay. Um, fundraising aside, um, in regards to advice and in regards to guidance for Tony and, mm -hmm. and the foundation itself, do you do that as well? Because um, role models, I think, is a key issue that Tony brought up. Yeah. Well, I think well, the, the, the commonplace is to say that one guides by example. Um, I'd like to think, no, I haven't sort of said, you know, <laughs> wake up in the morning and brush your teeth, because they can do that already. Yeah. Um, what I've tried to do is, is to say that there, there are qualities that any sort of teacher type like myself would try to put across the young, to do something with a great deal of passion, to do something with a great deal of honesty, to do something with a modicum of sincerity, to do what you believe in, all these things that we ask people, the young people, to stick up on their walls. And Wazimba, in a way, represents this. That's why I'm passionate about it. Good. You know, these young people are doing it for themselves. So to sort of go home and buy a sledgehammer and knock them on it is not the way forward. And I think that an initiative like this will grow, uh, if only because we tend as a society to not to give our young people legitimacy. There are a bunch of people who are, you know, out there to be, to listen to, to be seen and not heard, that sort of Edwardian view of society. Um, and they are, we keep on telling them, you are the future leaders at every speech, you are the future leaders of Kenya, you are the future leaders of the world, but we're not setting them up to lead. So I think this is uh, a good project. And uh, Tony, perhaps, lead. Uh, you tell them what leads going to be. Lead. Okay. Um, be before we talk about lead. Yeah. You don't want us to talk about lead? No, I do. No, you <laughs> you don't want us to talk about lead? You talk about lead. You're going to. We've come here to spread the <laughs> message. 
Okay. That's why we're here. Okay. We leave. And we're setting this. Okay. We're setting that stage. Yeah, we're, we're, we're setting no, okay. the stage. Right, okay. okay.